Yo, 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 yo. What up, everybody? How is it going? How is it going? I'm over here. I'm setting shit up real quick. Literally just mined some Zen blocks like it's nothing. Make sure you hit the like button. You know what I'm saying? If you're watching this on X, make sure you hit the heart. Repost it for your boy one time. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But yeah, man. We just setting up miners. That's what today's thing gonna be about. How to mine XN from every angle. Every angle. Every angle. What up, world? What up, YouTube? How's it going? Cyberspace. This your boy, Crypto Bruh, aka More World Peace to DJ slash producer, coming back again with another daily video talking about that crypto shit you know what i'm saying uh whatever you know, i don't know i don't know we're just here now we're getting close to like the one year anniversary of ribbing this shit every single day um talking about zen talking about crypto in general just well i mean really we talk about zen here obviously you know that is the future proof coin of them all um that's the low that's the lowest risk out of all the coins and it's the most talked about and analyzed and it's the lowest risk so it's pretty cool how it has that lens on top of it um but yeah today we're gonna get a little bit more complex if you were in the space yesterday and happened to listen to simple spaces um there's a lot of x1 chatter <laughs> like a lot of x1 chatter y'all like like a lot um so it's it's getting closer uh it's getting a much uh I don't know how to, I mean, how much realer does it need to get before people start to believe that it's doing its thing, you know? So I'm already knowing it's going to be real. I'm building a lot of hope, personal hopium around it rolling out. You know, I even have, again, um, I talk about branding on this channel a lot because eventually I'm going to release my own crypto shit. Like that's the whole plan, right? I'm doing research and development on all these brands and I'm learning so much about how people decide to roll out a brand in crypto or some sort of idea in crypto, right? So I do think where you put your brand is one of the most important pieces to the puzzle, depending on how you wanna say, you know, your legacy is. If you're someone, uh, which I'm gonna turn into very soon, you'll just see projects coming out of nowhere and it's just like bullshit, but it, you need to release things so people know that you're releasing things. Right. So where you want to live, your, uh, where you want your legacy to live is a really big question to ask yourself before you start just blowing up the Internet with your, you know, your art or whatever you're, you got going on out there, whatever your brand is. Um, but yeah, so for me personally, just like Team Zen, bro, doing research, seeing what I like, what I don't like. And um, yeah, I think X1 Chain is going to be a great place to land and expand uh shout out to joe blau but yeah so I'm, I'm ready for x1 chain again we've been attacking it from all angles anyways just to see you know how much xn we can get and uh yeah let's just talk about it man because yeah xn <clears throat> super easy ways to get it right if i want to get more x1 chain uh, or xn which is the native coin of x1 chain then simply i could buy a bunch of zen and just burn it right and there's tons of ways for you to burn your zen well, not tons of ways not like a ton but there are ways for you to burn your zen and people are constantly burning now i haven't updated this page in about two days and uh uh this is pretty cool to see right now look at look at this uh look how low uh in zen supply we are until mid-february so until mid-february we actually don't have much Zen hitting the market every single day. They're the most, right? Cause we're halfway through January. Oh, it's January 15th, 2025 guys. I mean, 24, <clears throat> excuse me. We're already in 25. I'm already thinking about it. Um, yeah, it's 2024 and it's January 15th. So we're chugging through this month. Like we're, you know, we're drinking a monster or something, but, um, what's dope right now is the oscillation in Zen. So check out this ladder that's been going on. And I think this is the re representation of why we're seeing a little bit of increase in Zen price today. So yeah, there is less inflation happening because this moment in time is when a lot of max mints weren't apparent. 
So this is either people putting mints randomly in sporadic um, or, you know, some people who just decided to continue minting. You know, it's a lot of mentors right in this pocket here. OK, because the the March crowd and in, in this this crowd right here, this is uh, Max Mentors. So this is a very important crowd next to these crowd, this crowd here too. this, this big, uh, spike in Zen supply, right? This big spike in Zen supply is a bunch of max mentors. All right. Now, in, again, in between these two supply shot, uh, I guess you could say supply increase shock. Cause there's going to be a lot of Zen that enters the field. <laughs> um, and whether people sell it or they burn it, we're going to find out. And that's kind of why, again, it might not be so smart to be buying uh, Zen in bulks, but it is kind of intelligent to DCA through this cloud, right? We've already been here for a year. So you set your like with January 15th already. Geez. I remember in July of last year where I was like, yo, you are starting your ducks in a row for right now. So the same applies for now. You better get your ducks in a row for the summer. Um, so in the summer, we know <clears throat> a lot of Zen is going to be coming out again. So the real question here is, do we see a sell off in March? Because people pump fake, <laughs> they pump fake uh, the community like, oh, we don't give a fuck about X1 chain or something stupid, you know, and then uh, they dump their supply instead of um, instead of actually uh, burning it. Right. You would think a lot of people will burn it, but we got to think of the opposite of like those that don't want to burn it because they want lower prices to buy and burn later. You get me? So I'm looking at that as like right here in August, we're going to have a lot of clarity on the supply for real. So the real target in Zen, actually, um, I'm going to put it on the chart right now. We're going to do August 4th. <laughs> Esoterically. We're going to go ahead and do a future prediction on the Zen world, because I think honestly, Zen could just keep Zen, uh, Zenning down. It could keep trending down until August of this year. So it would make no sense at all to be buying Zen or anything like that, because it'd be like, yo, this is going down forever. Um, not to say it won't ever turn around, but just to be realistic and not be like last year. Like last year, we had a lot of hopium that we would see run ups, you know? And I think it'd be great to think of this idea that we can see an all time high from where we were, but that's like a lot of hopium because we're, we're basically buying into inflation, right? So that it's not smart for the community to go broke because we're buying into people fucking with us. <laughs> if that makes any sense, if I made it even more simplistic, people got opportunity to fuck with the Zen price until August, right? In August, Things change up, things become realer because there's more people that are in tune and want to be here, right? But this first wave of of Zen is all speculation. It's kind of beautiful to see it like the way that it is because all this speculation is going to be crazy. The marketing situation that's going to go on here is going to be nuts. Um, so, um, yeah, do whatever you want to do. I, like I said, I have ideas coming out. I, I know for a fact I'm building with Zen. So the next thing is, again, where do I, where am I leading people? Um, so we know X1 chain is definitely where I want to get my users to land. And then the other place I want my users to land is on Bitcoin because we need to stay close to the rock. But we're not going to be rocking with Ethereum. I'm so sorry. <laughs> ETH is not it. It's not it for the data, right? Um, the club should be built on Bitcoin. The data should be put on X1. That's kind of like what I'm thinking now, because back in the day, we used to build clubs using the brand of the crypto. So you have like the laser eye Bitcoiners right now. You got the taproot Bitcoiners, right? Then you have your Ethereum head maxi motherfuckers, right? So they're, he they're uh, the ETH maxi ETH to the moon, ETH to 10K. And it could, you know, spot ETF on Ethereum moon moon mission. Right. So I'm not ruling that out. I'm just saying personally, maybe I don't want to put data over here right now for a user experience purpose of going long. Um, and that's what's cool about today's crypto. Like we have a lot of opportunity outside of just the brand. Like we know ETH is a good brand, but we also know Solana 
could be a good brand for you to build with because they have a good community. They have a lot of people over there. A good uh, economy is what I've been saying. If, if you catch my drift, Zen has a great economy. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the Solana economy is cracking. There's always new fiat. It feels like entering this economy um, because it has that type of user. It doesn't have like a crypto user. It has like a fiat user. So I haven't seen a decrease in their transactions. Granted, it's like I said, again, it's probably robots, but um, still seeing it high in transactions over most of the chains just shows me people use the uh, the, the the chain over there like ETH is unusable so only certain so many transactions can happen basically so many because of the way that it's unusable um, uh, and that's not a bad thing but again it's, it's, where are you going on your path to cryptocurrency bro where are you going bro me I'm trying to get the fuck out of whatever the fuck we in right now <laughs> I definitely don't want to go into 2025 with the same manifesto of crypto, bro. Straight up. Like going I'm going into 24 with a whole different manifesto of how I think in the space. So I want to continue to elevate this um this thought of like you can you can bring more to crypto than crypto can bring to you. Right? And you got to be in the right camp. If you're in the wrong camp or you're looking at the wrong brands, or you analyzing the wrong things, you'll spend a lot of time just looking at the wrong shit, right? And that's probably where we're going, I think, as well. There's a lot of individuals in crypto that have been here now that are on the same hype as me, where they're just like, yo, we're running this way. And they all seem to be Zinians, which is pretty nuts. That's the scary part about it. Like, so Zen did bring together a lot of like-minded individuals. And now we all have the same mission, which is we've been waiting for our slice of the internet pie. Like we get it now, right? It's been impossible to get a slice of the internet pie because of the VCs. So Zen lowers that barrier of entry with the blockchain on top of it, on the, on the hyperstructure, right? With the blockchain X1 chain, it just really gives a lot of people the opportunity to buy the internet now, right? Not later. Like you want to, like you buying Bitcoin and ETH right now, again, you're buying block space, um, to use the bandwidth but now you're betting on bandwidth getting stronger and more connective which i don't fucking know learning about zen blocks man our bandwidth is is going to be nuts i mean nuts over here um everything about the the blockchain is 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 simply working with all of the best things about blockchain up to right now so it's like it's like getting a 2024 like ford bronco <laughs> souped up the 100k one that's what x1 chain is going to be because you're getting all of the best tech of now in one and we'll see how long all this good tech goes right that's kind of like the, the theory here that's kind of how i think of like bitcoin too right bitcoin was the best tech in 2008 and when you go and watch it from 2008 bro motherfuckers are still living in 1999 in 2008 like let's be honest right it takes i think it takes about 10 years for people to shake off the last 10 years um, and that's why right now in 2024, people are still acting like they in 2014. I was like, no, dude, you're in 24. This is the Bitcoin. <laughs> there's new Bitcoins out there. You know what I'm saying? Or there's new, um, pieces of the internet that are available for people to obtain and grab if they like. Right. So again, uh, I'm hyped about X1 chain and I'm going back to the theory based on brands. It's going to be one of the best, but don't sleep on the rest of this market because it's just portfolio holding. Like, you, yeah, you probably do want to have your portfolio full of Bitcoins and ETH and Tron and Litecoin and Doge and all that other stuff. Like, yeah, that's that's a given. Uh, but what I would say is don't miss on the small caps that no one's thinking about because it's finding it's like. It's fighting. It's finding its footing in the internet of crypto, right? And this is the op right now. Zen is the op. I'm just keeping just a G. What up, Zen enthusiasts? What up, Pedro? What up, Sun Station? Your vast is down and clear your cash. What up, Shaka? Damn, Shaka got the red, red membership hourglass. Big ups to Shaka, rocking it, man. A wiggity wigs. What up, Crypto Craig? crypto cashew 
Tree City West. What's up, everybody? Yo, if you uh, if you in the house on Twitter, I don't know. I guess leave a comment below or something. I, don't know. I never checked that part. I just be streaming. But I learned that because we in this brand world, I learned that streaming on X is a smart idea. So if you are trying to get yourself into streaming, I recommend uh, using X as a platform. It's a good way to just get out there. I don't. But see, now it's not showing. I don't know. If you in the X world, hit the like button. Big ups to you. Big ups to you. Oh, here it is. I see six people. Chat. Year. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Th this one day will probably be really nice to have. But for now, I don't know. I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, let's go to uh, Jack Levin's Twitter real quick. GM, GM, what up, mind, body, and crypto? How you how you guys feeling today, man? It's Martin Luther King Day. Big ups, Martin Luther King, my guy. I had a dream that one day Bitcoin would be accepted by the feds. <laughs> I had a dream that one day somebody that I talked about Bitcoin to would tell me about something that I didn't even know about, about Bitcoin. I had a dream. You know, I, that's literally facts. One of my friends I got into cryptocurrency told me about Oracles. And I, I, I was like, man, nah, hell nah. But then I was like, oh, I got to look into it because he's not a crypto dude. He's just getting in. He's getting interested. He's he's finding that new cutting edge shit. You know, he's interested. Right. That's who finds the cutting edge shit. The interested people, not just the people sitting around in the cesspool of like regular crypto. Yo, you should go listen to uh, Simple Waters Sunday Spaces from yesterday. Um, again, Jack and them, they they laid it down. And what it looks like is we're moving into phases with the X1 chain, right? So with X1 chain right now, if you go to my guy, Cypherius, JL, um, his Twitter page, you can go ahead and sign up for um, the ability to test, run a validator node. And what they're trying to do is get the validator nodes up to 100 validators. So here, let's look at the website. It's actually a pretty cool website too. If you haven't checked it out, the uh, Explorer for X1. Rolando is code AF in South Texas. Shout out to MLK. Man, it's cold out here in New York, bro. Shit, it's 27 degrees. My, my car is like freaking out. <laughs> it's fun learning things though. This is my first real winter with a car because I'm from California. So being in New York and trying to figure this shit out whole new world bro whole new world but i don't know how people do this shit it's beautiful dude don't get me wrong but this cold weather take me back to the equator um but yeah this is the x1 page comes in dark mode automatically because why not <laughs> what you tripping really 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 simple vibes going on here we have our um blocks so right now this is testnet there's around uh, 893 blocks and then jack and team said that on fastnet they seen over a terabyte of storage man that's nuts a terabyte of storage like i don't know if you guys know this but like that's huge <laughs> um when you think of storage on a blockchain that's basically like you go in and um like i mean we don't really pay for storage anymore i guess the only thing i can relate it to is like icloud because a lot of people do have icloud and they have a lot of storage in the cloud right so that they can save all their contacts all their blah blah blahs you know um but uh here let's see if we can find this here for bitcoin let's see how big the bitcoin uh blockchain is Uh, let's see. Lifespan fees, and this is Glassnode Studio. It's a good way for you to go and uh, get some information. Supply transactions, network stats, block height, address growth, 
fees. Oh, wow. They have inscriptions over here now. Oh, I got to like log in. Oh, no, nah, that's crazy. But that's really cool, though. Okay, let's just see. Let's type it in. Oh, wait. How much storage is the Bitcoin block chain? Dun, 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 dun. I had to scrape ice off my car with a spatula. My G. Should have used hot water. <laughs> or maybe maybe not. I mean, it depends on, I guess, your, your, your vibe. If you don't have a really good windshield, do not use hot water. You're going to fuck your shit up. But if you got a decent windshield, hey, man, use the, use the hot water. Hot water trick. All right. So yeah, looking at this, Bitcoin is 100 or it's 435 gigabytes. Now an X1 chain, um, or at least right now, one of the chains in X1's ecosystem of testing right now has over a terabyte. All right. I think Ethereum is somewhere in uh, just getting there. You'll we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So Eve just got to a terabyte, right? So we we've only had a uh, dev net out for a little under a year and it's already at a terabyte. So I do also expect X one chain to be one of the biggest data hosting chains. And this was what I've been saying from the beginning guys, right? Who is running the ship? JL. What did he do before this image check? What the fuck is image check? <laughs> Yo, it's so funny, man. Can't believe, man, people are trying to get me to stop zenning. They're like, yo, crypto bro, stop zenning, man. You're gonna you're gonna miss the bull run. I'm like, what the fuck? That is crazy. Behind this dude. So Jack Levin created Image Shack, right? Image Shack's main priority, majority of the time of now until before, was hosting website photos. Like this is his website. This is what he is known for, data in the cloud. What did he do at Google? He made a cloud full of data, put a bunch of storage in the sky. <laughs> so I already knew this is where we were going to go with X1 chain. One of the reasons why I was like, damn, if, if X1 can't happen, crypto is done. Like We are in the wrong industry because crypto needs to move into storage. Storage is where it's at. Whenever we send a transaction, our transactions are based on the size of the call, right? So when I'm sending a transaction on Ethereum, then my ETH uh, price is based on how much data is in that call. That's why like Hex fell off a cliff because when they switched up all the gas structure and stuff, it was based in the way that that gas structure was. And now because there's so much data in that call, right? What, what, um, what I'm talking about is, uh, there's an issue when you go to claim your hex stake because more than likely it's going to have all the days behind it. So if I did a 5,000 day stake, then at the end point of my hex call or my when I end my hex shit, I got to put 5,000 days into one call so that it can give me the right calculations from the smart contract. So that's just bad math, bad accounting, bad. Uh, I mean, it, it made sense in 2019, but it's 24. So now it don't make sh no sense. Because again, it goes back to the data idea. Like, why am I subjecting myself to too much information because of the development, right? Maybe I need to be on a, in a better environment where the gas doesn't really get too impacted by everybody on the network or, but actually the hex code is just bad code. In my opinion, um, they, they didn't future proof it for system upgrades so that's that's bad on all of us for getting in on that shit <laughs> and not thinking about like oh what happens if uh, uh eth updates you know uh we're just looking at the grant of uh, the money but again um going back to x1 chain what it's helping perfect is the data structure of the internet we call cryptocurrencies because cryptocurrencies are an internet it's a network of individuals whether you believe me or not Anywhere you look, if you want to do the research, you're going to probably feel what I feel when I'm saying that cryptocurrencies are a full blown network and we all work together. 
the main network in crypto is Bitcoin. And again, that's why it's easy to know, like, yo, you should maybe own some Bitcoins, right? This is easy. It's the easiest one to own because everyone wants to be on this network because it is the golden goose of all the gooses, right? It's already have a hell of shit behind it. It's the most decentralized. It's a little slow, but now we're going to get side chains, right? Insert X1 chain again. Um, we're going to be getting a bunch of resources to help this scale, you know, amongst the other pieces of the internet. Right. Um, and that's why, again, it's a communication line. When, when you really look at the world, uh, I just saw this image pop up. So it's a good one to talk about. I don't, I got work. I don't got to work off today. MLK day in Ohio sucks. It's four degrees outside. <laughs> Fuck Ohio. Damn, four degrees. I'm over here crying about 24 degrees. Hey, I'll keep my 20. I'll keep my 20. I'll keep my 20. Jack's my captain. Aye, aye. 2006 vibes for me. That's how you feeling? That 26. What up, Nomad? Good morning, everyone from South Texas. I can confirm it's colder than we were used to. <laughs> Shit, man. Hey, hey use, uh, use these cold days to get a nice coat, right? Put that on the to-do list. Actually, cold days, I think they're low-key a blessing because you learn a lot about shit that ain't broken because it's just always nice. I'm coming from a little personal speak right now because I just found some shit broken. On the whip, it's not too broken, but it's like after the, all the research I just did, I was like, damn, it's because it's fucking cold. Fuck the cold. <laughs> um, this is a pretty interesting photo here. So, man, this is trying to bring up the article. I just want to see the photo. So this is what I'm trying to get at. Think of Bitcoin as all of these lines in the planet because it's such a strong informational concept of connection. We all are connected through the concept of decentralization in Bitcoin. That's really the root. That's the only reason it's going to be performing well because everybody is like this in Bitcoin, right? So this is this is this is what what you're looking at is um all of the world is connected hard line because the satellites are cool, but the problem with satellite is someone can intercept the, the, you know, a lot of shit can happen, man. You're sending a signal from the sky to the ground, um, <laughs> you know, insert bad, horrible things, you know. But um, if you are landlined, you know, you are getting the best connection. A lot of these, this is how the internet pretty much started from my knowledge, right? I learned the internet started from hard cable laboratories back in the 60s where people were hard cabling lab uh or they had their lay, lay, their lab was a hard cabled concept and they could send like facts of different things in between the phone lines right and then we have evolution of connectivity from the phone line because of that thought of like let me send you know a report to a different lab because we just ran a test and we want to let them know now instead of you know in three days by letter Right, so now we have this ginormous graph of how the world is connected via hard land line uh, connections. You go do your own research on this. I mean, as you can see, I popped this up. But this is like a New York Times concept. People think that data is in the cloud, but it's not. It's in the ocean. Like, come on, man. I've been through this shit, though, because when you learn about when you go through the uh, what do you call it? The conspiracy theories of like the Earth is flat. The first thing um, I learned about was like satellites. And how satellites don't point at the sky, they like point straight. <laughs> and I was like, hold up. I mean, I'm not saying the world is flat, but like that shit introduced me to this whole like, like how can the world be round if we're connected hard landline shit, right? Which I think is ridiculous, like that someone would even question connectivity. Why like why wouldn't I want the world to be connected hard landline? That means that's the fastest, that's bloodstream, bro. That's that's fast. Like, regard, regardless if it's flat or it's round, it's fucking faster. <laughs> so, the, but yeah, it's funny. If you get into the flat earth thing, they go hard on this kind of concept. Um, but um, I'm going to take it a different route and I'm going to apply it to Bitcoin because 
in cryptocurrencies in general because I, I am a true believer for, for my research, my personal research. You can watch all my videos if you want. I've got tons of them. I got like 200 motherfucking videos. Um, I just talking about Zen. And when I talk about Zen, Zen opens up uh, a lot of floodgates of comprehension on the overall market. Right. That's why it's good to learn about Zen because you're going to comprehend every pillar of the first principles. And when you learn first principles, you learn why other things can't be like a Bitcoin. And then from that, I would also say first principles of crypto in its sense is intelligent information that's being pushed connectivity wise. Anybody that's connected on that, that's vibing. Right. You're this. If you're vibing on first principles, it just happens to be you're this right here. Like you are the hard landline on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> everybody else is up in the fucking cloud you're down on the ground like yo do y'all not see the reality here you know um and again data is going to be the most important drive factor to get more people to comprehend crypto because the faster that we get people online on chain the quicker these cell phones can drop the faster we can get these apps to these humans right but we need something like an x1 chain to do that song to my uh precious crypt uh zen crypto what up the Oshland? hit it back with the six months he added himself a little red one too i will go down i will go down with the ship and i won't pay put my hands up or suspenders <laughs> there will be no white flags above my door i'm in love and i hope i will always be da da d da da d da da d da d I see your rap there, bro. Big ups for the rap and big ups for the six months, man. I appreciate it. Rolando, yes, sir. On the border. Oh, so Tad bought some some uh, Zen. He said at six zeros thirty six. I mean, again, I'm like, yo, I want Zen to keep going. I'm just afraid of these uh, these people that don't comprehend uh, how beautiful the the design of Zen is. Like you can say Zen is beautifully designed and there are actually people out there that will say no. <laughs> and then you'll be like, damn, dude, like put something up in front of me. And then they'll just show you like post chain. And you're like, dude, for real? Post chain. I'm trapped here. I'm fucking trapped here. <laughs> That's why I be thinking sometimes of crypto. And then I go and I ask somebody on this on this chain. I'll go to Solana. I'll be like, yo, what's going on over here? What's up, bro? What do I need to do? And then they're going to tell me to buy something like used car. Go find the used car or something stupid. I don't know. Zen is a safe space, bro. I cannot wait for all of the riffraff to get out of here. I uh, messed up my my Dex tools. It on, it on froze. My guy said, I was in the Navy. The earth is not flat. <laughs> I popped out on the other side, uh, sailing west. <laughs> hey, that's funny as hell. Yeah, I don't think the earth is flat. Like, that was a fun moment. I have a book somewhere here where I have, like, I take notes and stuff. And, like, in the book, um, I have the moment when I thought the world was flat. And I, like, went and journaled that shit. It was comedy to myself now. I think it's right here. Maybe the, the world is flat book is right here. Maybe not. Sheesh. Is this the one? It's all a lie. I think that's what I said. Hey, I recommend everybody journal though. They shit though. Get, get, yourself a, get yourself a journal, man. Journal your life, dog. Only you know you're, you're here right now. Only you know what you're experiencing. Only you can... Uh, Leave behind the ideas, you know. Get that real artist shit going, bro. Back in the like 17 or pre-internet, motherfuckers used to write shit down, man. We done with that shit though. Oh yeah. This is when I discovered that the earth was flat for like a split second. <laughs> I was like, yo, the earth is flat. I was like, it's all a lie. What the hell? Where's the other? There's another one in here that's really funny. But that, that's probably like uh, 2017, 20 or 2018 or so. That's when I was really going hard in the conspiracy theories. Funny, funny, funny. But yeah, man, get yourself a journal. Document. I still got a lot of pages left in this bitch. 
Well, because I have multiple ones, but this one is like the idea book sitting on the table. Come steal the black book. Um, but yeah, so look at this. Think, think of it like this, too. As we get back to the world is not flat. Oh, shout out Shaka for the five. I have to fly. Have a good day, Zinions. If you're not uh, hashing, go fucking hash. It's so easy now. Yeah, we'll do we'll do uh, we'll do a little bit of a uh, hash explanation. I did in the very beginning. But yeah, this new Woody hash resource, stupid easy. And I made a guide, and it's in the description. So if you want to start today, go down in the description. You can grab, um, you know, I, I basically I made this so you know always the commands i think that's where a lot of people get caught up when they start to mine is they forget like what template they need to pick and then they go off the rails because they they mess up right here right so in my guide i'm always giving you the refresh that you'll make sure you go through the templates you get the right one you get into the terminal and then you run the command all right so this is this is this is so easy now you're mining in seconds uh, we'll talk about it in a second, though. Big up, Shaka. Have a good one, bro. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I don't start it, it. The world is not flat. Maybe we'll get some flat earthers in here and they'll, they'll come and tear us up. <laughs> it's a little too deep for me, but I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, we're getting really deep over here on the Crypto Bro show, bro. On the Crypto Bro channel, we don't scratch the surface, bro. We make shit make sense. That's why a lot of shit don't make sense. You ever just be walking around like, damn, man, I'm just trying to fucking chill. <laughs> that's like my, that's my every day. My every day is I'm really chilling. And then when something awkward happens, I'm like, man, I'm just trying to fucking chill. And that's usually the world being weirdo. Man, Zen going up. We just had a $12,000 buy. All right. So picture this. Picture we do break out. Right. And this is kind of what I'm saying. What if. We don't get out of this channel. I mean, this is granted. This is a beautiful break. Like if you I mean, this is a bottom builder, right? So this is the clout Cox bottom. Um, so he's protecting this. This could be clout actually buying all of the coins to make sure that no one can jeopardize his bottom call. It's kind of it's just one narrative I'm running off. I think clout Cox is buying all the Zen. Um, but uh, yeah, so clouds buying on the Zen holding the floor. And this might give us an opportunity to to go up. So with a new floor introduced, right, which would be right here, if we did manage to go, let's say, up to this resistance here, that's a 500% uh, percent swing from where we are. And that's not bad, you know? And we don't know what the direction of the rest of the crypto market is going to do. Like, Bitcoin fell off the fucking, fell off, you know? And we got to keep our eye on here because this is the most important piece of the puzzle, right? Like, this is the internet. Right. Without the Bitcoins circulating in the narrative, moving people, talking, people creating, you know, VCs funding, you know, um, us smaller guys, I guess you could say that have ideas, but we don't have the resources. Right. Bitcoin is our resource. This is like our credit system. Like that's kind of my whole theory now. So we need Bitcoin to go up. But if Bitcoin pulls back, we already know everything else goes down with it. Right. Um, and if in Zen, again, it's it's is branded in Bitcoin and ETH because of X1 chain. So as X1 chain continues to grow and, you know, establish that foundation of like, hey, we can be a data benchmark system for ETH and Bitcoin because we are the best of both worlds. We are proof of stake and proof of work. So if you want that ETH feeling, you know, you can come over here, you can start staking. You know what I'm saying? They got the, the staking wallet up right now. Um, I don't have any X in here. I don't even know how you connect your wallet. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. They made a wallet. Wow. Connect wallet. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. They'll probably put that in the window soon enough. Um, but yeah, so they have staking here. So if you want to do delegated staking, we're going to have that. And then again, if you're into proof of work where you want to make your coins, you want to actually have hard tangible then we have that as well. And what's cool, again, is that uh, the network is being secured by the proof of work, but it's also being secured by the proof of state, right? So each side of the pendulum is working for the, the product, and you need to burn Zen to get X1. So at some fucking point, 
all this shit is going to blow up. It just is it's I talk about it every single day and I get more excited every day because I'm like, dude, we're getting closer and closer to that moment where everything in science world of cryptocurrencies is getting ready to collide. Like whatever they do when they collide atoms and they make atom bombs, like that's what's happening with Zen right now. Everything is literally on the table. And again, the next step is to get the validators to a hundred, right? And a lot of the validators is people who run nodes. So the validators is just one, think of it as like levels. Level, like let's say the bottom level would be owning Zen blocks and mining it, or owning X1 or XN and staking it. That's the bottom level of participation. Very low risk, not a lot of attention, right? Just stake it, mine it, chill. Then you're gonna have a step up, which is gonna be a read only node, right? These read only nodes, the RPC based nodes, this is a way for us to secure the network and get more storage. So if you have like a read only node, like think of this as like everybody is opening up their laptops and then they're gonna allow the hard drive space to be occupied by the X1 chain to help read and register, um, you know, block production on the chain, you know, or help with the difficulty of, uh, of X, uh, of Xenium when it comes to the difficulty, right? Like the read only nodes help with this because they keep everything in order. So Jack Levin was saying himself that the read only nodes would actually be mining some sort of token, whether it's X and M, whether it's XN, uh, they will be mining a token just for reading only because it does it helps the the system a lot and then what's so beautiful about this architecture again man we got we got some really cool beautiful shit going on here some like some like italian gravy <laughs> not spaghetti bruh not marinara we got some italian sausage gravy going on over in this bitch and this validator concept is nothing more than just a few more steps and tokens Right. So everyone that's here, these 113 nodes, they're a few steps away from being a validator. All they're missing is, again, supply, which is 100,000 X and X in right this current current moment. And then, of course, again, access to the mainframe uh, ledger. Think of it that way, too. Like when you're a validator, you're on you're a block producer. So you're in the mix, bro. You're in the race. All right. <laughs> you, if you crash, you're out. Right. You slash. So. This is a more, uh, this is the next step up. This is the highest arena. This is where you get the most profit from validating uh, in the network. But again, this is the most risk because if your validator goes down or you don't have the right performance, then you could potentially lose your XN tokens um, that are staked to the node. So it's, uh, again, that's why I said this is all about the security. Because then if you have people staking here, you have people mining really now everyone can just kind of focus on development right then after that it's like yo throw image shack on this bitch <laughs> cut to the chase man just put image shack on x1 chain call it a day who knows maybe he's gonna do that i don't know from my knowledge image shack is still running and performing pretty well let's fucking hash yeah hell yeah planes navigate also proves earth is round also in the physics <laughs> Yeah, as in as in the physics. Yeah, physics also kind of prove the world is round, my G. Um, but yeah, man. What about the internet cables? This is you. You walk around and you talk about Bitcoin um, and first principles and ownership and not letting you know BlackRock own everything. Welcome, welcome to the world of crypto, bro. Make a YouTube, make a sign. I don't know. Make something and tell people that you know that, that you know the truth. <laughs> I know the truth and the truth is they're lying to you and they want you to buy all of your bitcoins through blackrock or they want us to send our bitcoins to blackrock i think that's what's going to be the future the real future is going to be having these coins and the real million billionaires will be people who have an abundance of a specific coin that everybody wants and they can just drip it out or they're putting them in banks like for instance like if i own like four or five bitcoin maybe there's like a credit union that has a you know <laughs> i'm thinking abstract as fuck but like think of a credit union giving you a crazy apr for dropping your bitcoins and letting them like rock with it for a second like that's crazy <laughs> like especially if bitcoin gets to like 
let's say like a hundred thousand, which it should get to. So let's get abstract with it. Let's say it gets a five hundred thousand, and you have five bitcoins because you bought them in two thousand twenty four at forty two thousand dollars, right? You 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 went took a loan out, you put them here, and now that credit union is willing to, you know, because they have a spot ETF, they can take in your bitcoins and give you a certain APR on their trades with your bits from there. And like, same with ETH, you know, that's why it's like, how many of these coins really are going to be around in like 10 years? Like where, um, what, which one of these coins am I really going to see at chase right now? Brand comes into play. Cause it's like, Oh shit. Anybody can just come up this list. Like look at the Solana brand. It looks so much different than everything else. That's another reason why I'm keeping my eye on Solana. Like they look at it, look at it compared to everything else. Bitcoin introduced the circle concept because it looks like a coin, right? And then the B is like the money. Ethereum introduced like this, like uh, this like ETH, but like uh, like a pyramid eye looking thing, right? Tether is kind of stupid. Diamond, whatever. Binance is like a normal icon for like connectivity. XRP, boring as hell. We need to replace XRP with Zen as soon as possible. Doge is pretty cool. Yeah, look at the brands, bro. Look at the brands. Which one of these brands do you think is going to go to the top? I mean, maybe you don't have the eye for that type of shit, but I do. And that's why I think uh, optimism is going to float to the top very easy. I love this red. Look how only other red on the board is Avalanche and Tron. And they don't and they don't obsess with the red. What I mean by obsess with the red is you have a red with black instead of white because the white brings your eye to that. But with the optimism logo, they use the black, bro. Dope. Dope shit. Yeah, man. I like looking at this type of stuff. Um, it, Don't get me wrong. I think like in the next four to five years, there'll probably be classes taught about branding and crypto. Like people are probably already doing that shit, making hella money. I'm just talking about it. <laughs> I need to make the goddamn class. But yeah, branding and crypto is super duper important. I can say some other brands. Like that's why I liked Hex. Hex had a really good brand and it still does. The problem is the technology. So what Hex proved to me is that something can be really, 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 really cool. Like a lot of people can think it's cool, but the tech can hold it back, you know, or a situation can hold it back. And that's what you don't want. You don't want other hands in the cookie jar to fuck up your situation. That's not crypto in my opinion. Um, and again, I don't think Zinians or Zen Maxis, I'm pretty sure we're just first principle believers and we all connect on Bible now. And Zen just happens to be the the thing that we can all show to each other. Like, look at the Zen. I got some Zen. You got some Zen? You know, but if there was like another object to show, like how we're going to have X and M. Now you have Zinians that are like, yo, I got some X and M. You got some X and M? Let me show you. Or the VMPX. I got some blah, blah, blah. You know, but like that, that's the, that's why I don't think it's like Maxi. But like when you're like a, a hexagon, you have to be like all about just this nothing else so that, that feels a little old school to me like it feels like in the old school you didn't have like a ton of apps on your phone you know in the old school but like in the new school like people got all kinds of apps but they only use so many you know but they're they're open to the idea of new apps right um but you need to have that versatility if you don't have that versatility then you kind of already lost the race of the future right in the future people want apps it's it's apparent right bitcoin is only being held up because of the ordinals let's be honest the speculation of ordinals keeps this motherfucking price up because again i honestly do think blackrock knows about ordinals and the last thing they would want is for this to tank because of retail right because some youtube trader is able to capitulate bitcoin and if that youtube trader does it i'm here for it because i got some fiat down here waiting for thirty three thousand dollar bitcoin and below right so I, I do feel like we're in a weird time with the bits um as it's our champion of information right it's the internet of our space so it is in my opinion manipulated and it shows why you don't want that in a coin and again i can say that for zen too because zen has a manipulated mode or a manipulated phase jack actually said something yesterday that was pretty funny that I do feel like we're living through in Zen. He said that Elizabeth Warren will uh, uh, isolate herself out of existence. 
because of the uh, because of her ideology on crypto because everyone's moving forward this is what i'm saying like people want apps right everyone wants to move forward but if you're like chanting something that no one believes in you're organically gonna you know push yourself out you're gonna organically you know exit the room organically and maybe that's okay you know maybe that's the vibe maybe that's the the story that gets written so i'm saying that because here we see that the way that the even though this hasn't been updated and i'm sure if it re-updated i'm sure we would not be seeing what we see here because this is speculation um between a community of people um that all wanted the same thing which was a green candle so now they're all thinking how do i get a green candle out of this <laughs> And that's kind of why, again, I'm saying this hyperinflation for the first year to two years, this is going to be a hell of a ride. And we might see some downside or we might just see a c extreme up and then we're trading side until August. And then after August, things get really real in the Zen price. So I'm going to keep that specky here. I would say by August, we should be up and above uh, five zeros and 22. So let's let's leave that tag here what's today december yeah january 15th by august 4th 2024 we should be here crypto bro prediction <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a really good humble fucking um place to be while the rest of the while the rest of the shit figures itself out. Instead of giving gas mad hopium that we can achieve, you know, five Z uh five and a four. Um or four zeros. Cause I would like again, I would love to get back up to this range, but there's gonna be so much sell pressure between now and August. And again, I'm 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 part of it, so I'm giving you some of my game. That's why I mined Zen blocks. I mined Zen blocks so I didn't, I didn't have to burn any of my ETH in, so I can sell it into the pump. That's my play, you know. And I think there's probably other people who don't have X and M, but they don't care about X and so they're gonna just sell into the pump and wreck. Like these higher candles are just gonna sell into it. And again, that's what I mean. You're buying against the inflation, which is kind of stupid because you need to use time to outweigh the inflation. And that's kind of why, again, I'm saying by April, I mean, excuse me, by August, we should have most of the like hurricane finished. Like the hurricane is in like that shit should be done. And then we should see the dust settling on where people are in the space. Like, are you on X1 chain or is X1 chain? Um spanking the game hard and a lot of people have already changed their philosophy on zen and they're burning it like bananas right so it's either people will burn in bananas now or they burn in bananas later <laughs> and that's kind of why again i'm like yo maybe don't go you know i mean but it's all up to you whatever you want to do like it's a good range a 500 percent range here there's a lot of room for dca a lot of room for opportunity a lot of room for education but i i mean again I don't see us going this low down to seven zeros um, unless we have a, a tip, like a straight up pullback on Bitcoin, right? And a war is potentially starting now. So people might hedge back into the dollar for a little bit. And if people go back into the dollar, they're going to sell risk on or risk off. So they're going to risk off on Bitcoins because we're still in that world, man. It sucks. It's a stupid world to be in. And again, that's what I'm saying. Get in the ordinals, man. Get get the fuck out of the risk on, risk off, blah, blah, blah. That shit holding you back. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like the if this, 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 this war becomes real. We could see a dip in the dollar. Everybody's been talking about it for a Or not a dip. We should see a pump in the dollar. And that should make a dip in Bitcoin. Because wars pump dollars. Right? America makes money off of wars because it gives us a reason to print money. So I'm pretty, I'm, I'm skeptical. You know, I'm not keeping my ear to CNN and all that shit. You know, I'm just kind of keeping my ear on X. And that's why I like, if it pops up on X, I know it's real. I'm like, oh man, I say gorilla, the fuck in Zen now. I say gorilla, the fuck in the Zen now. Lulz. 
Five zeros twenty two is nothing in my chart. Why is it this price, bro? Uh, five twenty one. So this is a heavy resistance area, resistance resistance zone. What we did was uh, we the reason why I like this zone is because we waked into it back here on a way on a downtrend. It was a hopium zone. Gotta love the hopium zones. That's when you I, I made that shit up. But um, long story short, what I say, why, reason why I call it a hopium zone is because we were on the Brits of falling down, like keep going lower and lower. And then something happened and hopium entered the market and it caused this area to be a sell and resistance zone. And that's something we have to pay attention to because we see a lot of hopium spikes in Zen. Hopium spike, resistance zone, hopium spike, resistance zone. See, all my that's where I usually put the resistance at. It's where the hopium pops through. Um, and then we have a significant pullback. So you see right here, this is a that's why six. This will be really the flag to capture um, and continue if we can. All right. Capture zero uh, or six zero six six and then bump up five uh, zero ten. You know, maybe trade sideways, you know, and then maybe get up and then trade sideways some more. Then maybe fall down again. Maybe go a little low down here. You know what I'm saying? That's kinda, I'm just mapping it out. We got a lot of months. We got eight months, man. A lot of shit can happen in eight months. But yeah, I don't think I don't think we'll see any significant price action in Zen um, outside of just straight pump. But you're gonna need your Zen to sell into it or buying it right now. I'm gonna this not financial advice. That's why I'm saying I got my shit. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Fast Abdul wants to talk about bribes. Then I can stay at home in a robe and drink with my hand all day. But yeah, so that's a uh, the That's where I got that number from, from the five twenty two. So just a, it's a really good zone where there's a lot of hopium. We even had this capitulation candle through it and it recovered right here. So potentially this could be its own also uh, where people have uh, their math set up so you see here too the very first time we went down and saw the spike this was our our sell zone or this was a i mean excuse me our rebound zone right off of this went up came down danced on it and then found lower lows came up popped up saw a significant dump on this area saw some resistance on this area and then been low ever since right and then the first like we've been low ever since off that shit so I do think that is a, a significant flag to capture. If we can capture this flag, we on to the next. But again, that's why I'm trying to say maybe this flag is over here. That's all I'm saying. I, I'm a mine and don't worry about the price. But I, if you're trying to plan some shit out, maybe it's not this summer. Maybe I'm just being. I don't know. I guess I'm just some saying I'm playing devil's advocate, but I'm just trying to be as real as possible because Zen is very true. So the truth will set you free. So I would rather this be truth so that if it's not the truth and it's false and we go fucking bonkers out of here, then I'm like, all right, cool. Like that's the truth. <laughs> but if I could do some TA and comprehend some truth out of everything, like that's my truth. That's why I feel it because of, just because of the supply because of the characteristics and the behaviors of how people treat Zen, how people think about Zen, and then what we're doing in X1 chain that allows me to feel safe that there's players in the Zen chart. So they're going to be playing because they know what's next. Right. So that's my truth. But we will see, man. We will see. We got Og in the chat. Habibi, he want to talk to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fast duel. You want to talk bribes? What's up, Tekken? Let's go with the young five drop. I appreciate it, bro. Rolando said, yo, Tekken, you ready for the moon, then Mars? See here, look at this. Look at this sell off that's going on. We had a, a good intense buy happening and then a, an intense sell. Um, I don't vibe, man. Another thing I'm thinking of again is um, this liquid supply game. So I've been I've been keeping my eye. Let's go and talk about Zen real quick, and I'm gonna get up out of here. But um, I've been keeping my eye on uh, these top liquid supply chains. I think 
Maybe. We haven't gotten clarity because right now Jack is stair stepping <laughs> anything Zen related on making Xen. And it makes sense, you know? He doesn't want you to use Zen to make Xen. He wants you to use the mining. Because if you secure the network and you learn how to become a miner, you're more likely to become a validator. So that's his game. That's why he wanted all the like-minded individuals going back to the beginning of the stream that all wanted a change in the world and we're sharing the same experience. That's why he knew that we would probably be the best group of individuals to release a chain into the grasp of. Right? Like I literally have a piece of X1 chain in my hands every time I mine X and M. So I'm pretty sure he wants you to do it. And if you are still fighting that fact and you're mining a bunch of Zen, you're kind of going against the future status quo of uh, of how to get X X in tokens, right? Like uh, the next ground of people that come in, uh, it's kind of like high school or like whatever I'll be talking about. Like you don't want to get held back, you know, like you still run in the same place in 2025 with a new group of kids. Like, I mean, you can do that if you feel like that's your projection. But personally, your boy crypto, bro, like I'm forever trying to be the principal. Right. So new group of kids coming in. I'm just like, yo, watch the fuck out. We building over here, though. Whatever's being built in 25, I'm probably going to be behind it. Uh, but yeah, I do feel like this Zen thing is for burning and not to get like uh, emotionally attached to. Uh, but we're emotionally attached to the Zen because it's the mindset that brought together the core. So Zen is forever um, and everything can clone it. Yeah, oh, man, it gets so deep, bro. So sick. Our 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 project is so sick. Fuck what anyone thinks, bro. One of the other things that um made Bitcoin Bitcoin is the facts that Bitcoin um the miner, like the way that Bitcoin came into existence was the miner. And the miner had to become flexible and durable before more and more people joined the network. Uh, I would say this most durable moment in Bitcoin was 2013 when they introduced GPU mining. That really made Bitcoin very durable. A lot of people were down. They understood. They knew that it was sturdy and they turned on the miners. Now, it turned into an ASIC battle, right? Like you need a $10,000, $20,000 miner to get into the network of, of, the, uh, of the bits. Um, but again, uh, the concept of division of uh of innovation right let's divide the miner and everyone do their own thing that is what helped bitcoin spread out that's what helped the information turn into internet you know what i'm saying so um miners need to to do that that's zen zen has a ton of miners on a ton of different networks so you can go and find your zen right that's all it is it's just a mindset same when like when someone clones zen and they use zen as the backbone of their uh, manifesto like oh I, di I did this and got inspired right um, once they say that Zen owns the inspiration Zen owns your minor right you gotta say I just did this out of thin air right but it's I mean it's up to you you know if you don't want to give Zen the claim but it works just like Zen people will always say oh that works like Zen and then Zen owns your minor you know power the power of the brand Right. You can make a Nike dunk with your logo on it. But somebody might walk up and say, yo, are those Nike dunk customs? Now Nike dunk own that shit. All that hard work should have made a different looking shoe. All that hard work. Did you see the price on PTGC? I burned $50 worth of Zen. Wow. I haven't seen their new price. I, I not to say I tuned them out, but I just haven't been focused on Pulse Chain. I just I have my Zen staked over there because what I'm uh, what I'm uh, betting on is Pulse Chain is probably going to have a good uh, market cap, right? So I'm I'm betting on Pulse Chain having a good market cap. So this would be a good place to burn Zen. But other than that, I am not on Pulse Chain, bro. I can't endorse it anymore. It's just a fucking joke. I'm sorry, dude. That shit is a joke. Even this hex pump, it showed it. Everything is, it's like, it's, cool. it's forever. It's a forever circle of, of people circling. And I'm good. I'm good. Like, why? Like, cause 
why am I gonna rejoin this fucking broke and fight? Fight, you know, like fuck that. Ooh, yeah, they broke out. Oh wait, are they up again? Or they they just recovered? Ah yeah, ah yeah. Shout out to TG Sin. Look at them go. If you got your coins over there staked up, I know I have some coins staked up. But I'm not gonna go and look at it because it's gonna. If I open it up, it's gonna make me want to do something. So I'm gonna just leave it how it is. But yeah, this is a Zen team over on uh Pulse Chain. They doing their thing. I see him. Keep we going though, man. And again, I mean, like you, you know, that's what it's like. Pulse Chain. I have like a weird relationship with the ideology of it because I don't like that it's just take people's money, but I do like that it's it's um, a blank canvas for people to invent. So like P P T G C, they saw Pulse Chain as a way to invent, um, and I think that's why they're having great success. Um, and I hope they come to X1 chain as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to be a hater. I just cannot get, I just can't get boogie with it. I just can't. <laughs> I just think this shit's going to implode and I just do not want to be there. I do not want to be there when it falls into itself. I'd rather be in, in Zen where it's so pure and easy to comprehend that I don't need to, uh, start over. See, that's like another thing too. Here's the thesis on this. When you learn about something new, right? Like all these chains are here, right? All these chains all have their own little ecosystems and their own little group of people trading money in between each other. Every single chain on deck screener. So not any of these chains actually do anything. They all just provide people a clubhouse to trade money back and forth. They're not doing anything. They're not, there's nothing going on, you know? And that's kind of why, again, like it's hard for me to talk about other coins outside of this Zen ecosystem because there's no future embedded in them. And I'm on the new shit, which is what are you going to be doing in 10 years or two years from now? Like, are you scalable? Are you in the midst? Like, are like, are you in the fight, the greater fight, not just the bandwidth fight? Cause that's easy. Buy some coins, go and figure it out. Right. But I, something like me, I just don't have time, you know, but I, shout out to everybody that has time, man. <laughs> I used to have a bunch of time to look at a bunch of coins, but I'm so concentrated on creating a sound relationship with Zen. Yep. That's what it is. My, my relationship with the Zen token is so sound that I don't have to worry about the riffraff anymore. It's just cool. It's like, yo, cool. I got a bag of bits, a bag of ETH, got a bag of Zen and I'm good. Now I got a bag of X and M, so we good, you know. But shout out to everyone that's got time, man. I got no time. I'm still minting OG Zen on PLS. Damn. Yeah, bro, I got that PG PG PTGC staked until 2025. I'll come back and check then. <laughs> right? Just don't open it. Don't even open the website. Look at the price and be like, all right, cool. Uh, I need uh, more friends who can look at other tokens. See, that's the that's my whole my whole little philosophy on that. It's a weird one, but like, I I think this is a pastime. You know, it's like this, it's like this. Think of it as like a basketball player, right? Before, in the eighties, because I mean I come from this like line of basketball players. I didn't end up playing because I hit the road. I, I I'm I'm a millennial kid. You know, like by the time I'm in basketball, you know, my dad needed to put me in uh aa uh you know like i needed to be playing since i was five <laughs> five with the same guys and i make it to the nba right that's the formula now to get into the nba if you want your kid to get in the nba have them play basketball every single day of their life until they're in high school and then they're a prospect right so the this time concept of like you want to be everything that's like playing outside on a blacktop and you're the best baller, but you'll never be picked up by the NBA because you're on the blacktop. Like they don't want your, they don't, they don't want that work ethic, right? They want the person who's working towards the ethic that they want, which is playing every single day of your life in a paid organized situation where they can keep an eye on you. Right? So I, I apply that same theory to cryptos. And that's why it's hard for me to look at all this other shit because that's just not my vibe anymore. Like, 
going out of my way to go to the blacktop to play a pickup game when like I'm on my way to the NBA right now. Like what the fuck? <laughs> Y'all tripping. Like open up Pandora's box and something brand new when I'm on my way to the fucking NBA. You're tripping. Zen is going north. Like there's no reason for me to look at some coin named Smiley. I ain't got no time. <laughs> like I need to go make some music right now. Listen, weights. Fuck you mean? Look at coins. <laughs> Fuck you mean? But yeah. I don't know. Join a pay group. I don't know. Something of the sort. Uh, wait until now. The elite play is uh is those people who were in in the beginning and the new projects that come uh then the new projects that kind uh of that come to mind are golden yeah i mean when you're new uh to the project when the project's new and you're new the, that's where most gains are made like in db zen man i still hate myself but i love the product but yeah if, if i would have sold the top of db zen i would have been great for all last year i keep saying that to myself because it was a scar I'm going to wear that battle scar for the rest of my crypto uh, journey. Changed my whole philosophy of how I follow cryptocurrencies. Um, so, yeah, the, the next big thing, you, you won't know about it. It'll just show up in your wallet. That's why it'll probably be XN. <laughs> nah, you're good, Tekken. I like the play. Uh, I like that play. Stop playing games for pocket chains when you're on your way to the NBA. For real, man. What is... Uh, the, the Richard Hart quote, stop picking up pennies in front of freight chains. Well, the crypto bro quote is stop playing on the blacktop when you when you know you're headed somewhere. You know you're headed to the gym, bro. Stop going to the blacktop. There's nothing there for you. But there might be. Maybe there might be one really good game, you know. That's why it's not it's, it's not like don't ever go to the blacktop. But like, where are you? Where's your headspace? You know, are you a blacktop player? Are you going to the NBA? You know, are you playing in the field? Are you headed to the fucking MLB? You know, where are you headed, bro? <laughs> That's going to be a crypto bro T for real. Where are you headed? Damn. Have you thought about that? Because in Zen, we headed to X1 chain. God damn it. And we are ready for the world almost. Um, so again, I guess uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. So uh, how to mine XN uh, from every angle. Uh, Please down below you have all the descriptions. You have you have the uh, regular guide um, that teaches you how to build the mine. I mean how to build the miner uh, in 13 steps. Um, this one it takes a lot longer to do. Then we have um, another one I created, which is gonna be uh, where is it at? It's an advanced single line commander. Commander. So there's this one too. Uh, so long story short, you want to start, if you really want to get hip to the game, learn how to build the miner from scratch. When you learn how to build the miner from scratch, this is going to kind of be your, your template to start learning how to do commands. Because the more commands you learn how to do, the easier it'll be for you to be, build a validator. So if your goal is to be a validator, to be an X1 operator, you want to actually start here. You want to start on the guide to mine GPUs and blocks, right? You don't want to start on the single line advanced guide because this one won't teach you anything. It's literally designed to make it very quick for you to drag and drop uh, one line with your address in it and you'll be able to start mining. Uh, but again, this, this is just a build. It's not an app. So now what we have is we have Woody, man. Shout out to Woody. Woody is actually the... Uh, the account that made the gpu miner so he came into zen blocks and said fuck you guys i'm about to make a gpu miner and just crush everyone that just bought a bunch of katabo cpu miners because i'm evil right or i don't know i don't know what his intent was um but uh what he has come this weekend with a new application that he designed and it works flawlessly now, how does this work? This is probably the easiest way, but again, if you're using Woody's single line miner, you're not learning anything, all right? So you wanna use the guide to build the GPU, 13 steps if you wanna learn what the freak you're doing, all right? But let's just let's just do this real quick to show you how fast you can get online. 
So we'll go ahead. Um, and again, this is in the description. You'll find the Woody, the Woody vibe. Uh, but you'll go ahead. You're going to copy this little command here. We're going to go to Vast. Now, I like Vast um, because it's cheap. <laughs> but yeah, so what you want to pick in Vast is you're going to be picking the CUDA NVIDIA template here. These templates are ways for you to um, basically run different applications in the AI world, right? But we just want to run Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a form of Linux, right? Uh, the, uh, the app runs best on Linux. So what we're going to do again, we're going to here, we'll go back and we'll run it one, one, one take. So, you know, so you want to pick this one. Uh, this is because this is the most updated CUDA Ubuntu run out of all these templates, right? Just look for this one. Um, and we're going to go ahead and hit edit before we hit select. Now, why do we want to hit edit? Because we need to make sure that when we launch this, we don't just do it in an interactive shell, right? We want to make sure we run this through Jupyter lab. Okay. So you're going to go up, you're going to hit launch mode. You're going to run Jupyter lab. And then we're going to also going to check use Jupyter lab interface. All right. Now that this is here, what we can go is to the bottom and we'll hit select and save. Now this is going to take me to the search page on vast. Once I'm here, I can pick up anything that I want to pick up, but let's again, what we like is T flops. T flops helps us produce the most hash rate so we can get some of the best, um, possibilities on super blocks and blocks in general. So my hash recommendation or my T flop recommendation is always going to be between 250 to 375, um, being frugal. Like that's a frugal way of uh, trying to find a good zone. So what we'll do um, is we'll go ahead and we'll grab this, this one here on the top. Uh, this is a five pack RTX 4090. Uh, this particular machine, um, each GPU has 24 gigabytes um, of VRAM. So that's actually really good as well. Has 407 uh, T flops um, and it has a deep learning performance score of 280. Now the deep learning performance score, I just like to use this indicator to, to um, compare and contrast bandwidth. Now, reason for that is like, you'll see this one has five and this one has six, but the deep learning score is less on this one than it is on this one. Now, some people would say, hey, that doesn't really matter. Me personally, from my experience, it seems to slow down my hashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure that I, I pay attention to those variables and right. This is just so I get the best, best, best price, best price possible for the best. Um, I want the fucking best. There it is. Uh, so you'll see here, the best really was this one right here, 12 pack RTX 4,000, uh, RTX a 4,000 got 12 pack for dollar 20. So I'm hugging this one. Cause yeah, this is like what I mean. The, 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 they're going away. The cheap. GPUs are going away. The cheap setup with all the bang is going away. So we are paying a little bit more now uh, for something that was so simple before. Um, but we'll wait for this to load up. Hopefully this loads. If not, then we'll have to get something from somewhere else. Um, let's see. Oh, here it goes. Awesome. It loaded up. So go ahead and hit connect. Okay. So if you hit connect and you see that it says bad or 502 bad gateway, this error message is based on the Ubuntu not loading on the GPUs. Sometimes if you're getting GPUs from uh, a different country, it might just have a slow, like a lag, you know? So maybe you got to hit open a couple times, right? So if you see the, uh, the 502 bad gateway, that's just saying that there's a connectivity issue with the, the Ubuntu. Um, so you might need to close and reopen so that the Jupyter lab can load on top of the uh, GPU. So now it's all loaded. What we're going to do here again, Jupyter lab is a GUI. That's a graphics unit interface. That's all it is. All it's doing is it's helping the GPUs in the background register, um, commands, right? Instead of you going and typing in everything through a terminal, now you can kind of have a place to see all your files and such if you want. Um, I mean, now that we're using this one app concept, it doesn't really matter. It's really up to you if you want to do SSH or if you want to do Jupyter Lab. But that's kind of why I I am still moving towards just Jupyter because the SSH 
does take another step of learning this whole ssh uh, scp um tree city west has a really good video on this if you want to get more in depth with a, a higher level of uh generation right this is um going to be through your personal computer not through an internet browser so some people might like that vibe um, but me i like this vibe it's very simple for me to do it so now that we have this up um this year this is the terminal i went over here hit new i hit terminal up hit pop this page so we'll go back over here to the woody guide we'll grab it voila ta make sure that you don't grab the quotations okay okay drag drop control v command v whatever yours is so it's gonna load it up la da da so once that happens um i basically updated everything and then from here you can see it's a two uh, 22 megabyte little application that's going to be running in the terminal here um so welcome looks like it's your first time running this application let's set up the necessary uh the necessarily uh, necessary configuration right so now what we're going to enter in is an eip55 account address so basically they're just saying your eth address but using uh the correct terminology which is an eip <laughs> um i have my address right over here so let me just go ahead and grab it real quick get your address personal address from wherever it is then all you do is come over here hit command v again paste that in now the next thing that's going to pop up after you hit enter is it's going to ask you do you want to um pay a dev fee now um it's up to you to do this you can do zero percent or you can do ten percent um so really up to you if you want to help out woody basically any of the blocks you mine he's going to get a percentage of that um and you know shout out to woody he's doing this for free and he's doing it for zen for x and m which has no value so he's actually pretty fucking crazy for even doing this because none of it has value um but we're gonna go ahead and give him a 420 percent smoke weed every day enter okay um so now that we've done that you see here it says you're all set your configurations are saved and the application is ready to use so it says uh it runs a log here so it lets you know that hey, you just logged in or this address you set your dev fee to 420 which is basically four percent um out of the thousand percent and um out of the ten percent and um it tells me my machine id it tells me the difficulty and then it also tells me all of the nvidia cards that it's using so i no longer have to do the previous concept of two uh, step, right? Before we would drop this in and then we would run slash dot Zen miner, right? Or if we had multiple GPUs, we'd run a device call with all the devices behind uh, the app, right? That's from build, personal build. So you have two steps. Woody's makes it so that it's all under one umbrella. And that's it couple seconds and you're ready to go um you can replicate this over and over again like we could probably do this again pretty fast if we get a better uh if we get like one gpu instead of uh five and that's the thing about vast vast is a really good one but i also do like run pod because it's smoother run pod is so much smoother and it runs so much faster but yeah let's go ahead we got a rx 90 here damn they're kind of expensive whatever let's see how long it takes so it's gonna go ahead it's gonna load up let me go get the line from the guide line from the guide look how easy it is let's close this up all right so we're gonna go ahead and hit connect let's see this is say 502 all right so we're gonna give it a second we're just moving a little faster than the app right 30 30 something seconds we're moving still pretty quick see this is where the ssh works uh a little bit uh would work wonders and connection because you connect pretty fast but right now i think it's giving me the 502s because i'm trying to do it before a minute so this is successfully running though so it's kind of weird there it goes oh no damn all right all right all right well this one's not gonna load but you saw how fast the other one was so um it's really easy to do uh and i recommend that one 
but again if you um are doing this and you want to learn how to build your miner so you have a better understanding of of what's going on um definitely use the original guide i have videos about it um get you started today learning about the the processes but if you just want to get started on mining Zimblocks today with one line and a f and your address definitely go and check out the guide for woody single line command it's the easiest one for sure that's out and it'll get you set up and hashing today no questions asked all right isn't that a 42 percent death fee no it's out of a thousand percent so i'm going to be wait No, I don't think so. Man, my math is off, but it wouldn't be like that because that would be too much. Like, why would I be giving him 42%, you know? But and it isn't. It's 4.2 out of 1,000. So 420 would be 4.2 because you take a zero off. Or two zeros. Oh, so it might even be... Man, my math is so messed up right now. Darn it, Zen enthusiast. But I'm sure it's not 42%. I could be wrong though. I think it's 4%. <laughs> Who is the math? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Shout out to Ugg. It's 4.2%. All right. <laughs> I'm like, no way. I'm pretty sure because that would be, I would have to do zero. I'm sorry, Woody. I could not be giving you half of my blocks. That would not be happening. <laughs> But man, hey, thanks for everybody that's been tuning in today. Make sure you hit the like button on your way out. Make sure you find the Zen blocks. Make sure that you do everything that you need to do to stay confident and stay progressive in the space. Big ups to everyone that keeps following the channel, man, and sharing the content. You know, realistically, I just show up nowadays for the homies so we can chat and talk about Zen because where else are we going to talk about it, right? This is the intellectual conversation about the Zen. This is the internet. We are the internet. Everybody that is in Zen, you are a node of information and you're traveling through the space and time with this confidence <laughs> so don't feel don't fear sharing it you have it you have the confidence and um stay confident out there man don't let this world fuck your head up peace